Have you come to give God some praise? Come on, after last Easter, we're here to worship a risen Savior, right? He is alive this morning, and we've come to praise Him all over the house. Let's clap our hands and give Him some praise. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus.
We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, He holds the victory.
your presence this morning. You said that we could come boldly before you. This morning, we're coming into your presence.
so thankful that we are all able to come through those doors together and be under one house of the Lord and have the protection from all the distractions that are outside these doors and these walls. You know, about five days before I have my transition time to come up here, I started thinking about how I'm going to transition the songs into the pastor's message. And at first I'm out maybe jogging or at the gym, maybe mowing a yard, trying to get some talking points. But what I realize is I get distracted about what is on Todd's agenda and what Todd wants to accomplish and not what the Lord is trying to speak through me. When I'm at my very best is when I'm just sitting there, maybe it's just me, the Bible, my wife, worship music. That's when I'm at my very best. And the words kind of just start flowing through me and I feel more confident and I feel more ready to do this awesome honor to serve the Lord and I will say you know my prayer my hope for all of us today is that we can eliminate the distractions and find a place in our life where we can take the time to get to know the Lord better so I want to say a blessing over you may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and you may be seated good morning early birds Thanks for bringing the energy. I really do appreciate it. It helps me as well. I have a few announcements, but before I get to that, I want to start off with our ne next steps table. Say that three times fast. It's a tongue twister. We have Miranda and Caleb Shipley out there representing the next step table today. If this is your first time coming, or maybe you've been coming, we all have a next step when it comes to getting to know Jesus more, right? So don't be afraid. Go out there. There's a blue card the connection card, fill it out with your information. Let us know what you want to do and how you want to get closer to Jesus next. We'll have a team reach out to you within the week and we will help guide you through that process together. If you don't have a Bible, stop by and get a Bible. We will have a gift for you there so that you can get to know the Lord, you know, exactly what he's saying. I have a few messages starting with tonight. We have Revive Night, Revive Youth Night. And it's a little bit different because we're starting it tonight, but for every Sunday night here on and moving on. And that's at 5.30, yeah. Morgan's been leading that up, ages 11 to 18. And if you need transportation, get with Morgan. I believe she can help with that as well. So that is every Sunday night, Revive Youth Night, ages 11 to 18. Dedicate, well, let's start with Baptism Sunday. April 21st, during the second service, is Baptism Sunday. It will help us ensure that you have shirts in your size. If you use the online, you can use that QR code on the back of your seat and go online and you'll find all these announcements. But you can sign up there, put your shirt size, or you can go to the Next Step table, fill out your information there as well and put your shirt size. So that way when you show up, we have a nice shirt to represent your day being baptized and knowing the Lord Jesus Christ is your Savior. The following Sunday is Dedication Sunday. So if you like have if you have a baby that you'd like to dedicate back to the Lord, that will be the following Sunday, April 28th, also during the second service, the 1030 service. And then my last announcement for the day is May 3rd at 630, Bloom in His Grace. It's a ladies' night and there's going to be food, there's going to be flowers to build a a bouquet of prettiness that I know like the ladies like to do but maybe most importantly there's gonna be ladies up here talking about their inspirational stories and how Jesus changed their life so it's a great way to come and connect and get to know Jesus and get to know more ladies that are also connected and 
and serve in the Lord. So with that, our Life Kids ministry, you are dismissed to the back with your loving teachers. And everybody else, take 60 seconds, stretch out, and get ready for the, the message from Pastor Jason. Thank you all for coming. Right? Yeah, I'm glad you're here. I'm an early service person, too. I'm a both service person. I can't really do anything about it. But I'm glad you're here. I'm so thankful. Um, uh, starting our new format, we're, we're about to grow live church, y'all. Right? We got to make some room for some folks. And, and so um, last, last Sunday, we uh, had, had passed out cards. And I think you got one this morning. And we're going to do this for the next couple of weeks. We need your input. It's called uh, You Asked For It. And if you remember what I asked you for, write down a topic or two or three. But give me a topic that you would like to hear taught on in the Sunday morning message. Um, and then in September, I'm going to put together a series with the top four requests. That series is called You Asked For It. And so we're going to give you what you asked for. So please fill one of those cards out and give us some feedback on that. Um, that's going to be great. Can it be a question? Put the question down. Write down whatever you want to. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I'll look at it. I'll look at it. Well, I am very glad you're here. I can't go on today without mentioning Easter Sunday. Man, we had a fantastic Easter Sunday at Life Church. Um, I, I just tell you, between our two services, we had 384 people at Life Church last week. That was amazing. And that and that is uh, that's an all-time attendance record. 381. We beat it by three guys. We did it. We did it. So thank you for doing that. So I'm going to take a couple of minutes this morning before the message, and I just feel like I need to give some shout outs. I see Rachel back there. Are you getting ready to leave, Rachel? Can you hear me? You getting ready to go out the back door? Okay, hang on just a second. Where's Rachel there? Um, and I, think, I see Amber. Is Mike out? Okay, listen. I want to go through a handful of people, and I can't mention everyone who served, but I'm going to give some honor to our board members. I see Ryan and Casey McIntosh. They're on our board of directors. I see Amber there and her husband, Mike, and I see Kyle, or sorry, Rachel, that's not Kyle, it's Rachel, and Kyle, her husband, is in the sound booth, okay? Those are the, they, they make up with myself, the board of directors at Life Church, and they, they really, what these men make this church happen, okay? So I'm going to go from the parking lot to the front door. Van and Brenda Johnson head up that team. That's our first impressions team. And they hand up, hand up the parking lot team and the front door team greeters. And then you come into the church and you see that nice little coffee bar, right? Y'all love the coffee bar? I like the coffee bar. And so that is uh, Betty Beckemeyer and Viv Paloka. And they head that uh, team up for us. And then you go over here to our kids ministry and we go back to Kyle and Rachel Beckemeyer. And they head that team up for us. You make your way to the next steps table and... Ryan and Casey McIntosh head up that team for us. You walk into the sanctuary and you say ushers and Mike King heads that team up for us. And you get over to the sound booth and Kyle and Noah are back there making that happen. And Greg and everybody else who works in the sound booth. And then you get up here and you have, I think, the best band in Clinton County, if you guys have me. I mean, they're amazing. And my wife, Amy, heads up that team. And I just go across the stage, man. I mean, you got Amy over here, and you got Amber bouncing up and down all the time, right? And then you got Kendall on the... Man, Kendall did great. My, my, he was just getting it today. And you got um, my Aunt Kimmy, who's not here today. And then you got Morgan Holenkamp. And man, we got an amazing band. So I have to just say, all those people combined with everyone else who volunteers and serves... Every Sunday at Life Church, thank you for making this church possible. Amen. Amen. 
And, and I got one more shout out, and I couldn't help but look over, Derek, as I was watching you worship. I just kind of always glance back and see who's worshiping and who's not. I'm joking. I get to kind of view who's here today, right? But I looked over at Derek, and I saw you with your hand in the air, and it reminded me, Derek Warden right here. Wave your hand, Derek. <clears throat> Derek has been on a path to recovery for a few years, three years, three years in recovery. Yeah. And, and this is a hard road that he has walked, and he has put himself back on his feet, and he, um, he you know, there's, he was... I'll be honest, I'm just going to give his testimony for him, but he was working at Casey's, and man, he's my morning coffee guy, you know, and he, half the time, literally, the guy would buy my coffee and donut, because I was a pastor, and I appreciate that, Derek, but he got a great new job at K&J Chevrolet. You just started a couple of months ago, and you know, I just happened to look on Facebook, and like his second month at K&J Chevrolet, he was the employee of the month. Yeah. Um, so I want to tell you as a pastor of the church, I'm proud of you, and I'm so thankful you're a part of this church. We love you, Derek. Amen. But I got to preach, guys. I got to preach at some point. I'm going to say, okay, we got, a couple, we got three baptisms at the end of our second service. So we baptize. I don't know if you notice this, but like every other week, we've been baptizing people, man, all the time, baptisms. It's so fantastic. But we are planning a baptism service. And, and so we say, my gosh, we baptize all the time. Yes, but if you're out there and you've been on the, on the edge, you're like, yeah, I want to get baptized, but I'm kind of waiting. Don't wait. The Bible says don't wait. It says today is the day of salvation. So we want to offer a day. There's a special day. You can plan for that, and that's coming up, and I, I, think, it's, I think it's the 21st. I, I get mixed up on dates. I believe it's two weeks from now. Next Sunday, I'm going to be teaching on baptism, and the following Sunday, we're actually going to be performing baptisms. And so I, I want to encourage you, um, if you have never been baptized, um, or if you were, you know, and I say this, I'm not negating gating your baptism. I'm, I'm not putting your baptism down, but if it was a long time ago, maybe you were an infant or a child, you don't really remember it, and you're an adult right now making a decision for Christ, the waters of baptism are open for you, and we would love uh, to baptize you here at Life Church. So just put a bug in your ear on that. That's coming up in a couple of weeks. And the church said amen. amen. Okay, okay. Uh, we are finishing a sermon series today. And that sermon series is taken from Paul's salutation to the church at Corinth. We have the books of 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. They comprise three different letters that Paul wrote to the church at Corinth. And in the final verse of his second and, or third book, technically, his final book or letter to the church in Corinth, Paul writes this in chapter 13, verse 13. You just heard Todd say it a while ago. It says, the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And I always like to say, amen. So we began a series on this blessing that we speak. And we speak it every single Sunday because there is power in that blessing. Uh, we don't want to make vain repetition, but there's nothing vain about the love of God or the grace of Jesus Christ or the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And so there are key things that we like to speak over your life week after week. And we began two Sundays ago with love of God. I'm going to be completely honest with you. This is how preachers work. I just give you the mind of a pastor. I was going to cover this in one Sunday, and I was going to roll through it. This is a prayer track. We're going to pray God's love in our life. We're going to pray the grace of Jesus in our life. We're going to pray the fellowship of the Holy Spirit in our life. And then I was studying for that message, and I'm like, whew, the love of God? That's going to pick me a whole sermon. And so literally that week, one sermon turned into a, into a series. And it was interesting how the Holy Spirit works in your life. Because as I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, that works out perfect. Because on Easter, I get to talk about the grace of Jesus Christ. And you're here today, and we're going to talk about the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Man, what a powerful notion. I, get, I, I kind of get stopped on my tracks sometimes when I think about these things. It, they become commonplace. We go to church every Sunday. We open our Bible hopefully every day, and we, we spend some time with God. And we, but, but, folks, if you stop and consider how powerful, how amazing the fellowship, we're going to understand this a little bit more hopefully by the end of this service, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. I want to begin real quick with a recap on the love of God, okay? The love of God, 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. I love it. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called the children of God. 
Number two, we talked about the grace of Jesus Christ. And we said last week that God's love is all around us. It's everywhere. Uh, Psalms 108 verse 4, your faithful love is higher than the heavens and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Faithful love. Remember the first sermon in this series? It was hesed emet, two Hebrew words that bring us the faithful love of God, high in the heavens, reaching to the clouds. God's faithful love required grace to come into a corrupted world. Now, thank God in John chapter 1, verse 14, we read the word, Jesus, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We observed his glory, the glory of the, uh, as the only one and the one and only son from the father, full of what? Grace and truth. Important. He was full of grace. Uh, so love, I said this last Sunday, just, just a recap. Love is an intangible. The love of God is an intangible. To, to try to reach out and grab a hold of the love of God, it's high in the heavens. But through the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God was given to all mankind. In John chapter 1 verse 16 said, indeed, we have all received grace upon grace from his fullness. And so we'll finish this up with the sacrifice of Christ through that sacrifice. We have received grace and now we walk in grace. And the scripture said it's grace upon grace. So the love of God, everybody say the love of God has opened a pathway to bring the grace of Jesus Christ into our lives. And now we are in a position to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit brings us into fellowship with God. Somebody say fellowship. So hold on to that word, okay? Fellowship, powerful word. Um, So we're talking today about the fellowship of the Holy Spirit fellowship of the Holy Spirit. We first encounter uh, the Holy Spirit in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. And we just literally sang the song, as the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us, okay? So imagine in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. That's what we see in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. Anybody ever read that one? Someone's like, I'm going to read the Bible all the way through this year. And you didn't get too far, but you did get that one. What happened? Well, I got lost somewhere in Leviticus. Me too, guys. Me too. But I did read Genesis chapter 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the earth. And the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the waters. So we see it immediately at creation, the Holy Spirit hovering over the waters. We see God's hand in creation, and we see the Holy Spirit interacting in accordance with every mankind. That's where God's Spirit was. So throughout the Holy Spirit, I'm sorry, throughout the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit of God speaks. It regenerates. It empowers It teaches, it leads, and it continually points to Christ. I love this concept of the Holy Spirit, that woven in those ancient scriptures, there is God speaking through his spirit, regenerating mankind and and empowering. My goodness, has anybody ever been empowered by the Holy Spirit? Right? And it teaches and it leads, and, and the Holy Spirit is always pointing ahead to Christ. So the Holy Spirit appears to Moses at the burning bush. Remember that story? He's walking around and he sees a bush on fire. Oh, that's no big deal. The sun must have got to it. But the longer he walks, it's not burning up. And the Bible says it was burning but not consumed. And so finally he approaches like, what is going on? And the closer he got to that bush, a voice came out of nowhere. Now that would, oh my God, man, I mean... Number one, this bush is on fire and it's just keep on burning. And then a voice comes out of it and says, take off your shoes. You're on holy ground. I'd probably take my shoes off or run. But the Holy Spirit appears to Moses in that bush that was burning. The Holy Spirit later leads the people of Israel as a pillar of cloud by day and a fire by night. The Holy Spirit was what came upon Samson as he picked up the jawbone of a donkey and defeated his enemies. I don't know if I could prove what I'm about to tell you, but I see the Holy Spirit guiding the rock as it left David's sling. And I know that maybe if the Holy Spirit wasn't on that rock, I know it was on David because he was empowered by the Spirit of God to stand up to the giant when everyone else was cowering in fear. 
calming the hungry lions as Daniel was thrown into their den. The Holy Spirit at work. So the Holy Spirit descended like a dove at the baptism of Jesus Christ. And then that same Holy Spirit led Christ into the wilderness and strengthened him and empowered him as he was tempted directly by Satan. Folks, we're talking about the Holy Spirit of God. This is not some ordinary everyday thing. It's not some casual understanding. This is God's power. It's God's anointing, it's his fire, it's, his, it's the visible aspect of an almighty God. When the wind blows into the room, my goodness, when I'm sitting here singing and, and I was all into the worship today, there's joy in the house of the Lord, somebody, come on. And I mean, I could just feel it and I'm empowered. What's that? I don't know about you, but anybody else get that tingling feeling? Right? Anybody else get a little goosebumps? Like, Ooh, I felt that. And I know Brother Ben Barons is back there. And if you hit that keyboard on Waymaker, it's automatic on him. That's his song, man. And so, right, and you feel something. You can't explain it, but you sure can't deny it. Folks, I'm telling you, that is the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the word fellowship, that's a big word, fellowship. Um, I, I was telling Amy, I, I had this old song in my head this morning, and if I just, if I could only have a voice to sing like she does. But we used to sing a song in our church, Aunt Shelley, oh, what fellowship divine, I am his and he is mine. In the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. Fellowship. In the New Testament, that word fellowship comes from a Greek word, and that word is koinia. Koinia. Should have gave that to you for the screen. Uh, uh, Noah. K-O-I-N-O-N-I-A. Koinia. That's what Paul wrote. Koinia. Now we do our best. If you're writing it down, I see a K-O-I-N-O-N-I-A. You can look that up. We do our best. Um, English translators have done a very good job taking Greek words ancient Greek words and giving them to us in our language. But I've told you this before. It is very difficult to take a Greek word with a very broad meaning and incredibly deep meaning. And so there are words that are deep. At the same time, they are broad, okay? And so to try to bring that into an understanding to an English reader, um, the translators use the word fellowship, but what does koinia mean from a biblical perspective? Well, I looked this up, and I'm just going to read you what I wrote, or what I read. The essential meaning of the koinia embraces concepts conveyed in the English terms community, communion, joint participation, sharing, intimacy, and friendship. Okay. So I'm getting a little bit deeper understanding of what this, 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 this term fellowship or the concept of the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Let me say it again. The essential meaning of the koinia embraces concepts conveyed in the English language as community, communion, joint participation, sharing, intimacy, and friendship. That is what it means to be in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, in a position where mortal men and women, mortal men and women can have community, communion, joint participation, sharing, intimacy, and friendship with a holy God. It was God's desire in the Garden of Eden. It was taken away from both God and mankind when sin entered into the world. And the Bible tells us later that the law entered, that the sin may abound, but where grace abounds, where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. Oh, I'm going to say that again. Where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. And what does that exactly mean? It means that even when we were dead in sins, we are quickened together with Christ, and by grace are we saved. That's Ephesians chapter 2. And so when the grace of Jesus entered in, it brought back a portal to experience the love of God that had been shut off since the Garden of Eden. And because of this grace and this love, oh my goodness, you understand that now we enter into fellowship. It was no accident the way Paul wrote that salutation. He understood the flow and how God interacts with mankind. He knew it began with the grace of Jesus Christ. It went to the love of God and then finally ended with the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And that's where we are today. 
We are a people, if we are willing, that we can enter into fellowship with a holy God. The love of God opened a pathway to bring grace, and the Holy Spirit brings us into fellowship. And that's why every Sunday, I'll say it again, every Sunday we speak it. We speak it, the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So what do we do? We invite the Holy Spirit into our lives. And if you haven't done this yet, you need to invite the Holy Spirit into your life. And through the gift of the Holy Spirit, we experience fellowship and, my goodness, friendship with God. How do we do that? That's a good question. Okay. It's a big concept. Well, this is going to be great. I'm going to be in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Well, you kind of got to do something. You don't have to do anything to be saved. Nothing. Salvation is so free. It's the most free thing you could ever imagine. And it's the easiest thing you could ever imagine as well. If your heart is right and you bow your knee to God or you stand before God or lift your voice to God, lift your head, bow your head, it doesn't matter what posture you are in. You can be in any posture whatsoever. Hands raised, hands down. Hands here, hands behind your back. You could be in any posture, whatever, but as long as your mind and your heart are in tune and through your heart, your mouth speaks, Jesus Christ is Lord. And your heart believes that God raised Christ from the dead, you're saved. That's it. That is literally it. We can't earn that. That's freely given. But fellowship with the Holy Spirit has a requirement. You see, the Holy Spirit is not going to fellowship in a spirit, a mind, a body, or a soul that is still full of the wickedness of the world. Repentance is not, I'm sorry, it's a about face. I've told you that before. It's a, it's a 180. I think a couple months ago, I was talking about, you know, we have this, this repentance where we're supposed to be doing a 180, but we just keep going <laughs> You do a 360. <laughs> and that's not really what it's. Now, we all do stuff like that. But that's not really what this is about. It's about turning into the presence of God. And what we do there is we surrender. Big word. Big word. Big, big word. Surrender. Our eyes, our ears, our hands, our feet, our mouth. What does that mean? Well, we surrender our eyes and we guard what we see because we don't want that portal of the eye to bring the unclean things of the world into our life to corrupt the spirit that we have asked God into. I've told you before the spirit of the, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword and it divides between joint and marrow, right? And it gets in between your spirit. And so what it does is the word of God comes into your life and it kind of just separates soul and spirit. And that's an interesting concept, soul and spirit. They are not the same thing. The soul is your eternal existence. The spirit is your thoughts and your mind and, and the makeup and the who you are. And so those things are corrupted by a sinful world and they are together by all means means the word of God has the ability to separate and divide soul and spirit. Why? So that our corrupt spirit can come out of our eternal soul, allowing his word to bring in his Holy Spirit and then put us back together with him. So be careful, little eyes, what you see. That was a Sunday school song when I was a little kid. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. For the Father up above is looking down in love, so be careful. So this cool stuff sticks with you, man. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. Anybody know it? And so the next thing, we guard our ears, and we guard what comes in, right? I'll tell you one of the most corrupted things in the world is our television set. Let's be honest. It just is. And so, we, so we, we guard our eyes, we guard our ears, we guard our hands, what we go to do, we, how we reach out. Are we reaching out in anger? Are we reaching out in love? What does our hands, so God, I surrender in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. I surrender my hands to your will, that my hands will not cause harm, that my hands will not cause pain, but that my hands will only show the love of God. Y'all with me right now? We surrender our feet so that every step I take is not a step in anger. It is not a step in bitterness. It is not a step in hatred. It is not a step of rage. It is not a step of sin. I take my steps. Oh, if I'm not mistaken, the Bible still said, order my steps in the Lord. And I want God to take my feet. And so my feet are surrendered that my steps may be ordered by the Lord. Y'all quiet today. 
Can I get to the last one? You're really going to be quiet on this one. Surrender my mouth. That's our service for today. God bless you. (laughs) I'm going to be honest. I have a problem with this one. And it happened yesterday because I was going through airport security. And I had emptied my pockets. And I had taken my laptop out of my bag. And I had taken off my shoes and my watch. And I had, man, and I mean, everything is just in compliance. And I'm walking through and I'm doing the whole thing. And I step up and the guy's like, excuse me, but I'm going to have to, I'm just going to tell you what he said. I'm going to have to use the back of my hand to pat down your butt and your groin. I said, well, what? No. And I'm arguing with the guy and Amy's like, what's going on? I said, well, he wants to do this. Well, would you like to go somewhere private? I said, no, I don't want to go somewhere private. I want you touching me, bro. (laughs) It no matter if you do it here or there or anywhere, I don't want it happening. And I got mouthy. I did. And I was, I, I was mouthy about for 30 minutes late. I was mad. And finally, I'm like, I just did it over with. This is ridiculous. I mean, you, good grief, man. Seriously? I, got, I, I basically had a pair of blue jeans and a T-shirt on. Whew. Surrender my mouth. Come on, somebody. Come on now. Anybody? I got, a, I got any, uh, come on. Anybody with me on this? Yeah. yeah. That's the hardest one. It's the hardest one. We turn TV off. We turn radio off. Um, we can make decisions, but, but buddy, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what's in your heart? What's in your heart? Because all that rage that we would, see, we, we reach out with our hands. It got fire here first. And it came out of here a second. That we don't just, usually it's something out of my mouth before I ever go to go put my hand on somebody, right? Or, or, or run over to somebody. Ryan going to come over here and pop off something at me. I'm going to run over there. Who do you think you're talking? Before, before, before my feet, I'm joking. That's my brother. But, well, I might do it. We have done it before. But, you know, I'm going to run over there. Who, 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 who. That's come here first. And before I even take a step, I'm already, what, who, what, what. and then I'm running. Folks. I know I'm kind of jibber-jabbering. The mouth, the Apostle Paul said that, I think it was actually James, forgive me. I think James said that ships have rudders. And a massive ship is turned right or left with the smallest rudder. Or a thousand-pound horse that is turned to the right or left with the smallest bit in their mouth. And the tongue being a small member It said the tongue can no man tame. Goodness gracious. Fellowship of the Holy Spirit requires surrender. And in that surrender, we take captive our our pride, all the thoughts of our mind. We take them captive. So I haven't even got there yet. I was talking about (laughs) eyes, ears, hands, feet, and mouth. But what about your mind? Bringing into captivity every thought that is not of God to the obedience of Jesus Christ. Remember, it was said of Jesus um, that he gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. During the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5, Jesus says to his followers, you are the light of the world. So that light is in us. So how do we allow the life of Jesus to shine through us? We do it by being filled with the Spirit. Somebody say amen. John chapter 14, verse 15. If you love me, obey my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. We've got to move kind of quick on this. Acts 1, 8. Jesus says, but you will receive power. When the Holy Spirit has come on you, and you'll be my witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like that of a violent rushing wind came from heaven. There's that wind again, right? Spirit moved over the water. Okay, a rushing mighty wind comes in the house, and they, uh, they were, where they were staying, they saw tongues, this is weird, like flames of fire that separated and rested on each of them. They were all filled. Everybody say filled. Yeah. With the Holy Spirit, began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, Peter gets up, and they're like, what? They go into the street. They're speaking in other languages. They're like, 
they're so full of the Holy Spirit, they're acting crazy. And people are like, whoa, they're all from Galilee. I can hear them speaking in my native language. And somebody's like, yeah, they're drunk. And Peter's like, hang on, it, it, we're not drunk. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. And he began to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm going to go back to verse 37. Um, when they heard this, they heard the sermon about Christ. When they heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized, each of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise is to you and your children, through all those that are far off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. And that's us today. The promise was to them and to their children and all of us. The promise of the Holy Spirit is here today. Now I'm going to preach my message. You all ready for the message? After we have invited the Holy Spirit into our lives and surrendered ourselves to God's will, we are in a position to receive the benefits of the Holy Spirit. And there are seven benefits, and I'm not going to take long, but we're going to look at these seven benefits. Uh, give me that, that, that picture. I'm going to bring back a picture of that. Remember that picture a couple weeks ago? That's called a Jewish menorah. This is the candlestick that was inside the tabernacle during the time of Moses and the temple during the time of Solomon and beyond. When Christ came to the earth, Herod's temple sat on the temple mount, and that was in there. One full talent of gold melted into that cast. That is one solid piece of gold. It's not put together. It's one solid cast of gold. And that was inside the temple, and that was the light of the temple. And on this candlestick set seven different candles. That represents the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit bringing light into God's presence. So when the priests would do their work, it was the Holy Spirit. That was the light. And so throughout the Bible, those candlesticks, it's always going to represent the Holy Spirit. In the book of Revelation, it was interesting that John writes, John, Jesus says to John, write to the seven churches, the seven lamps of Asia, okay? So it was symbolic of this candlestick that John would write to those seven churches. And so it always represents the Holy Spirit. I want you to, before we take that slide down, look real closely at that and see the very center the center candle that branches into three on each side. There's seven of them there. And we're going to look at seven attributes of the Holy Spirit in the next 10 minutes. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2 says this. And Isaiah is prophesying the Messiah, Christ. The Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, a spirit of wisdom, understanding, a spirit of counsel and strength, a spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. I want to move quickly to Second, uh, Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. Therefore, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is in you, the laying on of my hands. And so in the tabernacle, Moses uh, had put this candlestick and, and seven candles, and from the writings of the Apostle Paul, and then the prophet Isaiah, we see seven aspects of the Holy Spirit, and we can pray these into our life every day. Every day, you need to pray God's love in your life. Every day, pray God's grace in your life, and every day, walk in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Number one, the center one that, that brings everything together, it's called freedom. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom. So you pray first for your spirit to be set free. How many of y'all need some freedom in your life? You get bound up by something, you can't hardly pray. You're not really free to worship. You just feel like garbage all the time. You can't really explain it, but you don't. Well, you need to start praying that the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, would bring freedom into your life so that you can have freedom in worship. I want freedom. For, folks, when the band starts talking about Holy Spirit, come rest, I'm gonna have my hands in the air. I'm gonna move around. I am free and I don't care what you think. I don't care what they think. I only care what God thinks and I want to be free to worship my God. I want to be free to pray. 
I want to be free in prayer. Where I get down to pray and I'm not worried about what's coming next. I'm not worried about tomorrow. I'm not worried about yesterday. I'm not lost in some random. I want to be free in prayer, somebody. I want the gifts of the Spirit working freely in my life. Knowledge and wisdom and, and discerning of spirits and tongues, interpretation, and prophecy and working in miracles and faith. I want the gifts of the Spirit. But oh my goodness, I want to be free to operate in the fruit of the Spirit as well. I, I say it all the time. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. God, give me that. Well, I want to be free. So I need a free to anoint. I, and let me say this. I want to have freedom and anointing to operate in the office that God has called me to. Somebody say freedom. freedom. Okay, and then Isaiah goes and talks about wisdom, understanding, counsel, strength, knowledge, and the fear of God. So the second candle is Wisdom. So I want to encourage you, somebody, to start your prayer journey with God's love, Christ's grace. And I'm encouraging you to get into the Holy Spirit and begin to pray freedom into your life. But then after you pray freedom, you need to pray wisdom into your life. And you should do it every morning before you do anything else. Because wisdom brings order into your life. Right? We do not serve a God of chaos. In fact, he came into a chaotic world and, and, and established day and night and seasons. God is a God of order. Can I get an amen? amen? He established order into a chaotic world, and he wants to bring order into your chaotic life. He wants to give you a sense of what is right and wrong and what's up and what's down and what's left and what's right. Can I get an amen, somebody? Okay, God wants to bring order, so I pray the Holy Spirit would give me wisdom and bring my life into order and make things simple and make things organized. Seriously? Yeah, that's what the Holy Spirit brings. It brings wisdom. And wisdom brings order. And you're, you're, you're all messed up and unorganized and, and everything's difficult and hard. Maybe you need to pray, God, make things simple in my life. Is that all right? What, what if we did that? Number three, understanding. See, we, we just go about our day. We clock into our job. We walk into our classrooms. We, we fix our morning coffee. We head out to our trips. We go to our families. We, we just start our day and we don't even consider, God, I need some understanding before I step into what's going on today. And so I want to pray the Holy Spirit bring understanding because why? Understanding brings clarity. It takes the confusion out of things. Yeah. Bring some clarity into my life to understand the perfect will of God, to see with clarity where God is leading me today, to have a clear understanding. God, give me goodness gracious. You ought to be praying this every day, folks. Give me understanding. And number four is counsel. Counsel. This is about decisions. Every one of us, I, 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 I should have looked up the stat, and I've read the stat before, about how many decisions the average person makes in a day. It's hundreds. Hundreds of decisions are made every single day. And we make those decisions often without the counsel of the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm not beating you up or using you as a punching bag. I'm just talking about me and you and everybody else. We make hundreds of decisions without the counsel of the Holy Spirit. So God bring counsel into my life, right? For accurate long-term decisions. Every opportunity that comes my way, I need the counsel of God in those decisions. Number five is might. That's authority. The Holy Spirit was on Christ and gave him might. It gave him authority. So I need to pray the Holy Spirit would remove discouragement, weakness, and confusion, and give me boldness and authority. Anybody need that? I need it. I want boldness. We, we live too much of our time in, in discouragement, weakness, and confusion, and we just can't figure things out, and we don't know why it's all happening, and we don't understand this. And so we live our life, but we need to walk in the might or the authority of the Holy Spirit, and we just pray, God, and guess what happens? When you pray for the right things, God gives them to you. When you pray for the wrong things, you don't get your prayer answered. So when I pray for might and authority, God answers that prayer, and he will give me boldness to walk in my calling, to challenge the enemy, to be who God says I am. I'm going to have boldness to be everything I can be. Come on. Somebody say amen. I'm going to walk in boldness, guys. And I'm almost finished, but we're going to go to knowledge. Knowledge, that brings revelation. The more you know, the more you see. Knowledge 
Folks, I don't want to walk into this life tomorrow without understanding. And second, without knowledge. I want to know. And knowledge brings revelation. And it doesn't matter what level your IQ was. I don't care what your IQ is. I don't care what level of education you had. We got, I'm sure in this room, we got some GEDs, some dropouts, some high school diplomas. We got some bachelors. We got some masters. We got some PhD. We got some people that are smart in this place. We got people who are, no, you're just you. It doesn't matter because revelation, the Holy Spirit, bring knowledge into your life above your pay grade, guys. And there are oftentimes in my life, I have to have it. I have to have it. I, I don't have formal training in half the things I do for this church all the time. I pray the Holy Spirit give me knowledge and help me to operate. So I pray for the ability to create. Listen to this. I'm going to pray for the ability to create and manage in areas that I have no training or ability in. When a bunch of fishermen from Galilee changed the world, they weren't trained to do it, but they had knowledge and revelation from the Holy Spirit. That's what happened in the upper room when Peter got the Holy Ghost, and then he started preaching. He never preached a message before, but the, day, the first sermon he preached, 3,000 people got saved. He didn't go to Bible school. You understand? Now, I mean, three and a half years with Jesus is pretty good Bible school, but you know what I'm talking about. He stood up in boldness. And everything I've just read to you is what made Peter stand up and say, hey, oh, they're not drunk. This is what was prophesied by the prophet Joel. In the last days, saith the Lord, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. <laughs> Woo! And he preaches a message and he gives an altar call. And 3,000 people were baptized and saved and filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Folks, you can create and manage in areas that you have no training or ability in the power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. And I pray for a word of knowledge about my life and present issues. I'm going to close with the fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 says it like this. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So God, we, we give our God, we give God rather our undivided attention and trust in the fear of the Lord. Uh, Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. So fearing the Lord means, this is not about being afraid. Fearing the Lord means to be in reverent awe of his holiness to give him complete reverence and to honor him as the God of great glory, majesty, purity, and power. We, we, we come into the fear of the Lord. It's an awe. It's a holy awe. Not about being afraid, but it's about a level of respect that the word respect doesn't even define. It's holy awe. And so in the fear of the Lord, we pray for wholeness innocence and purity. God, bring wholeness and innocence and purity into my body, into my mind, into my spirit. This is the place that the Holy Spirit can lead you to where you can become new. <laughs> new. You may be worn out from the world. You may be sin sick. You've been there and back, bought the t-shirt. But in his presence, wholeness and innocence and purity comes back. Hmm. Thursday night in my niece's front yard, I dedicated my great nephew to the Lord. Nephew and his wife flew in from Ireland and wanted a baby dedication. We did it in the front yard with the family. It's a beautiful moment where I prayed the Holy Spirit guard the innocence of this baby, two months old. We're going to be doing it at our church in a few weeks. Well, you're not babies. I don't think anybody here is quite innocent. But in God's fear, the Holy Spirit brings us back. And Peter said, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Wholeness and innocence, purity, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Let me go back and tell you again. It brings freedom, wisdom, understanding, counsel, strength, knowledge, and the fear of the Lord.
You all got a communion cup in your hand today? If you don't, lift a hand in the air. I'll sure bring you one. Got one up here, Derek. Got a couple up here. Hand in the air. I know it's a solemn way to end a service, but in this cup, can I say it like this? We receive the grace of Jesus Christ, love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. It's that simple. Christ made covenant with mankind, and the covenant of Jesus Christ is here. What did that covenant do? It brought grace that unlocked love that brought us into fellowship. And so when we're in this service today by receiving the body and blood of Christ in complete grace, love, and fellowship. And we're bringing all this together in this series right now in a holy moment. Would you lift up the cup? Father, I thank you for your love. And I thank you for sending your son. And then I pray that the Lord Jesus, we thank you for submitting yourself in grace and becoming a sacrifice for all the world. And, and through that grace and through that love, you have opened us into fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And so, folks, uh, I hope I'm getting through to you. As you, this bread and this cup right now, folks, come and tell you, as we receive it, I, I, I can't explain why, but it happens. Freedom, wisdom, understanding, counsel, strength, knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. You hold it in your hand right now. And we give you thanks for what we are about to receive. Would you pull back that layer? Goodness gracious. Somebody's about to be filled with the Holy Spirit right now. Right now. It's about to happen. It's about to be filled with the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. The night Christ took, the night Christ was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. He said, this is my body which is broken for you. Receive it. In like manner also, he took a cup. He said, this is my blood. This is my new covenant with mankind. And as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, do it in remembrance of me. As you hold this cup in your hand, I'm praying the Holy Spirit baptize your life. Freedom, wisdom, understanding, counsel, strength, knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. Would you receive the cup today? Well, let's stand in worship. Would you stand with me all across the place? Thank you, Jesus. Calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me holy. surrender. Take my life and make me new. Forgive my sins. Fill me with your spirit. My life is not my own. I give it to you. Thank you for new life. In Jesus name. Amen. Clap your hands. Let's give God praise today.
Uh, if you're new to Life Church and want to know more about us, uh, Caleb and Miranda are at the Next Steps table to greet you. If you have any prayer requests, you're interested, you need counseling, if you need a free Bible, if you need anything and you want to connect, please visit that table and see Caleb and Miranda today. Uh, next week, I'm going to teach on water baptism. So come expecting. We're going to open up that what that looks like. And from my heart to yours on a Sunday morning in April, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And may he cover you with his name, Jesus. I love you. We'll see you next Sunday.